Introductions. Now time for member statements. The member from Bruce Curry, Owen Sound. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'm very pleased to rise today to recognize the Myalgic Encephalomyelitis Association of Ontario, also known as MEAO for short, on their annual Community Engagement Day at Queen's Park. In October 2013, a business case proposal for the Ontario Centre of Excellence in Environmental Health was presented to the Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care with the objective of ensuring that effective and appropriate care is given to individuals who suffer from chronic, complex, environmentally linked illnesses. To date, there has been no answer from the Ministry on the approval of the business case proposal. Our caucus health critic and Whitby MPP, Christine Elliott, recently met with members of the Interim Steering Committee of the Ontario Centre of Excellence in Environmental Health to discuss the issues facing the hundreds of thousands of patients who are now and have been for many years without care. Sufficient time has now passed to deliberate the business case and we are calling on the Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care to act. Time is of the essence. Today, there are approximately 570,000 people in Ontario living with chronic, complex, environmentally linked illnesses such as myelogic encephalomyelitis or chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia and multiple chemical sensitivities. Individuals living with these conditions have overwhelming fatigue and a host of other debilitating symptoms that can get worse after mental or physical activity but does not improve with rest. I'd like to thank the association for their excellent advocacy work for insurance living with myal myalgic encephalomyelitis and associated illnesses. We look forward to receiving the health minister's update with regard to his approval of this proposal. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member statements. The member from Sudbury. Uh, thank you, Speaker. It is with great pleasure that I congratulate the Sudbury Multicultural and Folk Arts Association on their 50th anniversary of serving Greater Sudbury, Northeastern Ontario. As a former city councillor, I was fortunate to really get to know and become friends with the wonderful members, staff, and volunteers of this organization. I am sincerely impressed with their commitment to our community, a community that celebrates with them the beauty of multiculturalism. Our part of the world is a better place because of the work this organization does to welcome newcomers and help them transition into our community. The SMFAA champions cultural sharing and the passing on of our traditions to our youth. This group also organizes the annual Canada Day festivities at the Sudbury Community Arena, which is a proud showcase of our city's many heritages. The association administers the Newcomer and Settlement Program that includes services such as facilitating employment, EFS, ESL, ESL and FSL classes, community referrals, and relevant legislation discussions. The association also has a multicultural youth council made up of members ages 10 to 25. This group participates in ethnic dance, fundraising, and interacts with other community organizations. They assist in organizing, they assist in organizing events such as International Day Against Racial Discrimination, Human Rights Day, Canada Charter Rights and Freedoms Day, and Prevention of Violence Against Immigrant Women Awareness. Lastly, the SMFAA is involved in cross-cultural education. They visit schools, hold international cooking classes, and organize days around the themes of celebrating multiculturalism and anti-racism. Again, congratulations to the Sudbury Multicultural and Folk Arts Association on their 50th anniversary. Thank you. Member statements. The member from Brampton Springdale. Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased today to speak about the seventh annual Remembrance Remembrance Day ceremony held in Kitchener. This so, okay. I'm pleased today to speak about the 7th Annual Sikh Remembrance Day Ceremony being held in Kitchener this upcoming Sunday at the Mount Hope Cemetery. This historic Sikh Remembrance Day Ceremony takes place every year at a location of unique military significance in Canada. The gravesite of Private Bukham Singh, the only military grave in Canada of a Sikh soldier from the World Wars. Private Singh was born in India in 1907 and at the age of 14 he moved to Canada. He joined the Canadian forces and was wounded twice on the battlefields of France. In fact, Canadian soldier Private Bukham Singh was one of the only, only uh, one of only nine soldiers allowed to serve with the Canadian forces in the First World War. Spe Speaker Bukham Singh's war medal and grave were only dis discovered by the Sikhmuseum.com after having been, been forgotten for nearly a century. His war medal is the only known surviving military medal of a Sikh Canadian soldier from World War I. With discovery of this war medal and military grave, the Sikh community has reclaimed a forgotten son, and Canada has reclaimed the story of a hero. Speaker, let us pay tribute to Private Bukham Singh and all of those brave Canadian men and women who made sacrifices to protect our freedom. I especially want to recognize the service of our Sikh community for advancing the principles and values which make Canada the great country that it is today. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much, Speaker. It's my pleasure today to, to share my support for the Ontario Legislature Internship Program. For almost 40 years now, the program has been providing recent graduates with the opportunity to work with members of the provincial parliament, gaining a practical experience with the daily workings of Ontario legislatures. I can say from my own experience working with interns, the program provides a variety of learning opportunities. 
for everything from helping members write statements, questions, or research relevant issues to participating in comparative study trips to other legislatures. I've had the honour of working with three interns who have all excelled in their own personal way, and today I would like to welcome my fourth intern, Christy May. Originally from East Gwillimbury, Ontario, Christy completed her Bachelor of Environmental Studies at the University of Waterloo and Master's at the University of Guelph. She shared with me her excitement to work with my office and I on environment and climate change critic portfolio issues, as well as local issues facing my riding. I look forward to showing Christy how much Huron and Bruce matters. And to close, I'd like to share with the speaker and everyone else in the house that I'm proudly wearing green today because it's Show Your 4-H Colour Day. And I would like to invite everybody to the Royal Agricultural Winter Fair, where youth from across the province and Canada will travel to the city where the country meets city and bring their animals and show how proud they are to be raised on farms. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Speaker. I'm pleased to rise today in recognition of the myalgic and cephalomyelitis Association of Ontario Community Engagement Day. Today is Community Engagement Day for the Myalgic and Cephalomyelitis Association of Ontario, MEAO is the acronym. In October 2013, a business case proposal for the Ontario Centre of Excellence in Environmental Health was presented to the Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care. To date, there has been no answer on the approval of this business case. In the NDP, we have a strong commitment to keeping people healthy, supporting health promotion and disease prevention, and ensuring a, a, a sustainable health care system. From the business case proposal from the OCEEH, we learned that over 568,000 people in Ontario have been diagnosed with this chronic, complex, and environmentally linked illnesses. That's 5% of the Ontario population. We also learned that people suffering from these conditions experience systemic barriers to getting the health care they need because diagnosis and treatment of these serious conditions are not currently available in Ontario's health care system. Now we're hearing from the MEAO that over $150 million is spent annually to serve people suffering from environmentally linked illnesses, but it's done in a fragmented way that does not achieve the desired health outcomes. We believe this has to change. It's time to support the proposed Ontario Centre for Ex Excellence in Environmental Health and ensure that people suffering from environmentally linked conditions receive the effective and appropriate care they need to move forward in their lives. Speaker, I want to commend those that are here today that are uh, here on behalf of those afflicted, afflict, aff affected and afflicted uh, by MEA. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member Davis, member from Cambridge. Thank you, Speaker. In 2007, I was driving past the century-old red brick building in Cambridge that had been the home of the Galt Knife Company, and I noted construction workers were working renovating the building's large multi-paned heritage windows. This was the beginning of a wonderful adaptive reuse of a heritage building in, transformed into the Grand River Brewing Company. Imagine the delight of my very good friends who learned that a craft brewer was setting up shop two minutes from their home. I do believe they were their first customers. Indeed, as Grand River Brewer began distributing their craft beers to local restaurants, pubs, and community events, the residents of Cambridge were delighted to have this unique brewery right in the heart of our beautiful city. Not only do we have a preserved heritage building, but Cambridge has a thriving and expanding business, business that has created local jobs. Speaker, it is clear that CEO Bob Hannenberg's dream has become a rousing success. Many of the fine craft beer, beers crafted by Grand River Brewing have won several Ontario and Canadian brewing awards, including my personal favourite, the Plowman's Ale. Grand River Brewing offers brewery tours, hospitality room for tasty and tastings and local events, and I would welcome and encourage all members in this House to visit my riding of Cambridge to stop in for a very enjoyable pint. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. Phragmites, the common European weed, reed, has been referred to by ecologists as Canada's worst invasive plant. Invasive Phragmites releases toxins from the roots into the soil and impede the growth of local plants, and these toxins can even kill other plants. They force out local vegetation, resulting in decreased plant biodiversity. These tall, densely growing weeds can reach up to five meters in height, can cause damage to natural habitats that they grow in, and also cut off food supplies for native wildlife, including several species at risk. 
Speaker, Phragmites can grow so thick that even deer can get caught up them and eventually die. In my riding of Chatham, Ken Essex, and in many other areas of the province, they contribute to flooding as they spread throughout ditches, roadsides, and on our highways. And they're so thick that they can even pro uh, prohibit natural water flow. Now, I've seen this firsthand, most recently while working with farmers in the Leamington area during the Essex County plowing match. To see just how far widespread Phragmites are, all one needs to do is to travel Highway 401 between Windsor and London to see this invasive plant growing in medians and ditches. In some cases on county roads, Phragmites actually impairs visibility to oncoming traffic, an accident waiting to happen. Thus far, Ontario has taken a piecemeal approach to combating Phragmites, and it's recognized as an invasive plant, but not a noxious weed. The Ontario Phragmites Working Group has established four recommendations to help control and manage Phragmites. These recommendations include emergency use permits for herbicides, approval of aerial treatment application, establishing a province-wide control program, and lastly, establishing an Invasive Species Act. I encourage the government to address this growing nuisance head-on before it spreads out of control. Thank you, you, Speaker. Member Statements. The member from the Cumberland County West. Well, thank you, Speaker. Mr. Speaker, earlier today I had an opportunity to meet with volunteers representing of, of Myeloma Canada, including Leslie Weatherby, who lives in my riding in Northumberland County West. Leslie, along with other volunteers, came to Queen's Park today to help us understand more about this disease and the kind of treatment support the patients and their family needs. Myeloma Canada provides educational resources and emotional support to patients, family, and caregivers. Increases in awareness of this disease and its effect on lives of patients and families. Promotes clinical research and access to new drug trials in Canada. And facilitates access to new therapies, treatment options, and healthcare resources. Myeloma is the second most prevalent form of blood cancer in Canada. Nearly 1,000 Ontarians are diagnosed with myeloma every year. While there's no cure, early diagnosis and the right treatment at the right time will save lives and save health system money in the long run. I commend Myeloma Canada for the work they do every day for patients and volunteers living with the disease. I also urge my colleague, the Minister of Health and Long-Term Care, to continue the champion for a national race rare disease strategy that will make new treatments more affordable. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements. The member from Ajax Pickering. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm uh, pleased to once again sponsor the Myalgic Encephalomyelitis Association of Ontario. MEAO, of course, is the acronym. And we are here today for Community Engagement Day at Queen's Park and that would just be down the hall on the west end of this floor. I have sponsored this association many times over in the last several years for their extremely worthy cause. MEAO supports hundreds of thousands of patients in Ontario who have complex, chronic, environmentally linked illnesses. As pointed out numerous times over the years, these patients experience systemic barriers to getting the health care they need because of the diagnosis and treatment of these very serious conditions are currently unavailable in Ontario. One year ago, MEAO, together with the Association of Ontario Health Centres, submitted a business case proposal for the Ontario Centre of Excellence in Environmental Health to the Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care. But to date, approval has not yet been given the business case approval. I request, and I'm sure others do, uh, that with the assistance of our good Minister of Health, uh, Dr. Hoskins, that uh, to health and long-term care that we approve the business case proposal for Ontario Centre of Excellence and uh, assist hundreds of thousands of people. Members are welcome immediately after this, of course, down the hall at rooms 228, 230. We welcome to see you all, and I will sit down so I can go down there and speak shortly. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Thank all members for their comments.